This is Season 6 of Totally Useless Information with Nick and Roy. Listen, laugh, and learn. What is the most common mineral on the earth? What did Duke Kahanamoku do that made him a hero? Hi, I'm Nick. And I'm Roy. Welcome to Season 6, Episode 14, where we scour the internet and other sources to find totally useless information just for you. Plus another entry from our mailbag and the headline from news from around the world, couple who got married over Zoom gets divorced. Totally useless information. It's everything you never needed to know. Step right up, folks. Don't be shy. Move it. Totally useless information with Nick and Roy present Games People Play. Now that mm. I've piqued your interest, we've been using Zoom so much, people got married over it. Yeah. And now we're going to find out what happens at the end of our show. Thank you for they joining us. They got divorced. They got no, divorced. No shite. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Unmute your mic. Unmute your mic. Hey, Miss Pac-Man is now in the World Video Hall of Fame. More really? than 40 years after blazing the trail for female video game characters, Ms. Pac-Man. It's not even Miss. It's Ms. She's Ms. so modern. Yeah. Ms. Yeah. Pac-Man was She's inducted. Woke. She's woke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she woke up. Uh, she was inducted into the World Video Game Hall of Fame. The Ms. Pac-Man arcade game was released in 1981, which incidentally, that's when Roy and I graduated high school, allegedly. Mm. Uh, yeah. Now, that was Midway, the company who made it f their follow-up to Pac-Man. And uh, it started uh, the sequel, Reimagine the Main Character, to acknowledge the original game's female fans, according to the Hall. After selling 125,000 cabinets within the first five years, it wow. became one of the best-selling arcade games of all time. Ms. Pac-Man. Yeah, I kind of like that game a lot. In World War II, mm -hmm. South Korea banned any cultural imports from Japan, who they were at war with. It was finally lifted, and get ready for this one, 2004. The cultural ban was in place until 2004, but Koreans wanted Nintendos. In the 1980s, they wanted them so much that a Korean version of Nintendo was distributed. Now, listen, it's exactly, the picture is exactly a Nintendo. <laughs> I mean, it's the same thing. And they had the same exact games. They just gave them different kind of names. Wow. And the system wasn't called Nintendo. It was called Comboy, C-O-M-B-O-Y, Comboy. And it was made by this obscure, unheard of company called Hyundai. Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah, Hyundai was the nothing. They were, I mean, they made machinery and stuff like that, but they we, nobody in the world knew Hyundai yeah. except for in, the, in South Korea. Yeah. So, of course, <laughs> Comboy stood for Communist Boy, don't you think? I, I would think so. Maybe. You know? <laughs> Have you ever played the Wait game? Wait a minute. It's South Korea, not North Korea. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. This is where I am. <laughs> I'm in the wrong Korea. Um, Kerplunk. Remember that game, Kerplunk? Yes. So Kerplunk is a fun game. It's a children's game invented by Eddie Goldfarb with Renee Soriano, first marketed by the Ideal Toy Company in 1967. The game mm -hmm. consists of a transparent plastic tube, plastic rods called straws. Right. Red and yellow and different uh, colors, and several dozen marbles. And you had to pull the stick, and if all of the marbles fell into your tray, you, you lost the game. You went kerplunk. You went kerplunk. Then I used to love that game. Then I lost all of my marbles, and I couldn't play anymore. Right. I was going to say you played for a limited amount of time. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Nick's favorite game now is called Empty. Empty. <laughs> It's his head. <laughs> what is what does that mean? I got a good one. Okay. You know the the movie Laura Croft? Yes. Well, the game Laura Croft was sparked by the movie with Angelina Jolie. 
which I paid attention to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She was climbing the sides of mountains and stuff. Yeah. I didn't even know there was a mountain there. I couldn't yeah. pay attention. Yeah. <laughs> in your, in, as far as you were concerned, there were two mountains there. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. I like her. Okay, but it wasn't a... The, the movie wasn't supposed to be called Laura Croft. In fact, it was written for a man. Oh. It was a male part. But the people that looked at it said, oh, this is just another Indiana Jones. Mm. So they said, okay, we'll change it. So they did. They changed it to a South American woman. And her name was Laura Cruz. C-R-U-Z. Well, when they got it in England, they said, the UK people said, oh, this is no good. Let's give her a UK friendly name and we'll call her Laura Croft. Oh, very, very. Brilliant. And that's how you get Laura Croft movie and the subsequent game, which was a massive hit. The Laura Croft video game, the game of trouble uh, with remember the little pop um, mm, dice pop That was another fun game. I like that game. Trouble was developed by the Koner brothers and initially manufactured by Irwin Toys later by Milton Bradley, which is now Hasbro. The game yeah. was launched in America in 1965. The classic version is now marketed by Winning Moves Games USA. The gameplay board and concept is a derivative of the Indian board game Ludo. Oh, cool. So that's where they, they modeled it after. I used to, oh, we used to spend hours with my grandfather on it, and and he would just love to just to pop the, uh, the dice. I said, Grandpa, just... Just, it's not your turn, you know, Grandpa. Exactly, just because you like the sound of it. I think your grandfather was playing Kerplunk for yeah. too long. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. He lost his marbles. Exactly. <laughs> the first video game in space. In 1993, a Soviet cosmonaut named Alexander Serbrov, which I've heard that name, Alexander Serbrov. Mm. He was a famous uh, cosmonaut. He played a Game Boy loaded with the game Tetris. Later on, at an auction, a charity auction, they sold the actual game that he played for $1,220. So not a very popular auction thing. <laughs> yeah. No, they had 100 they had 200 300 I think the Nintendo Game Boy back then was like 500 bucks. So. <laughs> <laughs> now, if it was a combo, it would have gone way, now, If Angelina way. Jolie played it, I would have paid more for it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> That's not where you put your thumbs. Uh, <laughs> the, classic, the classic kids game, Tag. Everyone played tag as a kid. Sometimes you play tag as an adult. That's a whole different uh, sure. type of game. Exactly. Tag tag was evolved from games played throughout history. Second century Greek writer Julius Pollux documented a game where two teams determined who would chase the other by flipping a shell. Oh. And so was Julius Pollux, second century Greek writer, created the game of tag. Nick and I are getting so old, we play check the skin tag at the dermatologist. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Apparently those little skin tags are called viruses. They're like little viruses, according to my doctor. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. I got a few in my computer. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Tag, you're it. In 2008, the Obama presidential campaign team purchased ad space on 18 different video games. They were all games that had little spaces like little billboards in them, and they sold the advertising space. Ingeniously, um, Obama had this um, young guy who was a media marketing guy in the computer age, and he said, let's buy this space on a game called Burnout Paradise, Skate, and of course, the super popular football Madden game. Oh. The billboards read, and they showed uh, uh, an image of Obama and read, "Vote has early voting has begun. Vote for change, and go to voteforchange.com." That's what it said in the ads. Eight years later, of course, all we had left was some change in our pockets. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us week after week. We really appreciate your support. We are in over 62 countries now, and more and more people are going to our website, which is... 
nickandroy.com nickandroy.com and you can check out previous episodes there we'll talk about the birthday messages you can order for your loved one all coming up as you're listening to totally useless information with nick and roy Einstein was a moron newton was a jerk he was nothing in science 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 spiders webs can be used as bandages Ooh. In ancient Greece and Rome, doctors used spider webs to make bandages for their patients. Spider webs supposedly have natural antiseptic and antifungal properties, which mm. can help keep the wounds clean and prevent infection. It is also said that the spider webs are rich in vitamin K, which helps promote clotting. So, the next time you're out of like bandages, just go to your attic and grab some Webacillin. Oh, how cool. Yeah. But listen, Nick, I, that that leads me to think that in ancient Greece, you had all these people going around and they had these really nicely dressed wounds that had no infection as they died from the venomous spider bite. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we, yeah. Wow. Here's my teaser. Okay. The most common mineral on earth is a substance called, and get ready, folks. This is the one to write down because I don't know. I never heard of it. It's called Feldspar. S E L D S P A R. Did you ever hear that? No, Nick? I haven't. I just learned that. No, now. me either. And it's the most common mineral on earth. It's a testo silicate, not to be. Um, mistaken for um testicles <laughs> it's a testicle <laughs> silicate right and it's a testicle silicate mineral that forms into rocks and makes up 41 percent of the earth's crust i learned something that's why we encourage everyone to bring a a pencil or a pen or eyeliner crayon whatever you'd like to write it down we're not just your average dopes no <laughs> we're useless we're useless dopes we're uh, well above average dopes yeah well <laughs> That's because we're humans, and humans cannot walk in a straight line if you're blindfolded. Is that true? Humans tend to walk in circles without... Hold on, a... I'm going to do it myself. Hold on, I'm going to put a gonna... blindfold on. Okay. Oh, I'm right. sorry. <laughs> okay, you're right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You just, bu you just bumped into the wall. <laughs> um, humans <laughs> tend to walk in circles without an external focal point, like a tree, a mountain, or a building, or whatnot. Not right. only that we can't walk, we even cannot swim or drive straight without any visual help. Wow. So after doing some research, scientists have confirmed this phenomenon that without anything to guide them, humans are unable to maintain a fixed course. Amazing. I've watched Nick drive blindfolded. That's fun. <laughs> no, no, you watched me drive not blindfolded. Oh, that's right. You weren't blindfolded. That's just the way you drive. I'm sorry, folks. What? I got a little mixed up. Maybe I blindfolded myself because I didn't want to look at the impending yeah. doom that was coming. Well, you know, you're you're walking in circles when you're listening to Totally Useless Information with Nick and Roy. It takes less than six minutes for the brain to react to drinking alcohol. I said it takes five minutes <laughs> for the Britain. <laughs> no, no, no. What did you say? Six, five minutes? What? It five. takes three minutes. <laughs> it's no, a okay. three minutes, three <laughs> minutes to make six minutes twice. They found that alcohol consumption decreases the levels of creatine and choline in the brain. And long term use leads to brain damage. The study was done on Nick. <laughs> yes. I'm still going around in circles looking for the scotch. Uh, when you cry from happiness, tears of joy, yes. the first tear will come from the right eye. Mm -hmm. When we arrived at our destination after driving with Nick, that's exactly what I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, tears of joy because you arrived. Well, God, thank you so much. I kissed the ground <laughs> <laughs> like the Pope. Yeah. <laughs> hey, do you know when when I moved up here to Toronto in 1990? When I got out of the car, I kissed the ground. That's what I did. I came back. Home. Really? Yeah, I did that. And then I, I spit out some pebbles or whatever because it was. Yeah, it was, you didn't realize dogs had been there. Yeah, but. exactly. <laughs> so when you cry from happiness, the first tear will come from your right eye. If you're crying from sadness, it will fall from the left eye. Oh, is that true? 
well, I said it, and it's on totally useless information. Wow, it folks, is. that's a good one. Yeah. So if if you're happy, it's the right eye. If you're unhappy, it's the left eye. You know, if you if it's crying from sadness. Right. If you're happy and you know it, cry with your right eye. Yeah, that's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> Suck on a helium balloon, and we <laughs> same to you. <laughs> that's a good segue, right? <laughs> Speaking of Angelina Jolie, suck on a helium balloon. <laughs> Suck on this. <laughs> wow. Okay, so you suck on an alien balloon and we talk like Alvin the Chipmunk, right? Yes. Well, why? Because helium has so much less density than oxygen. Normally, our vocal cords are filled with oxygen, but when we suck on the helium balloon, those same vocal cords fill with helium and our vocal cords are free to vibrate without any restriction because there's no density. Right. So they vibrate much faster and you get the much higher tone. It may sound funny to somebody. Suck on that, Bill Nye, the science guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, what did he do to you? Jeez. I don't like him. <laughs> so if you if you hear that funny sounding voice, you'll probably laugh at it or maybe you laugh at a joke. Laughing at a joke needs activity in five different areas of your brain Ooh. at the same time, which means on this show, it never happens. Uh, this, right, exactly. <laughs> it's not very funny. <laughs> no, not because it's not funny, because they, cause they're, they're uh, assuming we have five different areas of the brain that works. That's, <laughs> That's what the problem is. It's not because it's funny. Kerplunk. Kerplunk, yes. <laughs> The physiological study of laughter has its own name. It's called gelotology. Gelotology. And, uh, gelotology, yes. And we know that certain parts of the brain are responsible for certain human functions. For example, emotional responses are the function of the brain's largest region, the frontal lobe, which is non-existent for us. But researchers yeah. have learned that the production of laughter is involved with various regions of the brain all at the same time. Oh, wow, because trying to figure it out, why is it different than something else exactly. i guess exactly right? it makes it funny scientific studies have found that ice cubes taken from fast food restaurants are actually dirtier than the water in your toilet oh that's true nick yeah the scientists took these uh, ice cubes from different places fast oh. food restaurants had a bad policy with their ice machines not cleaning them out properly and so on they found fecal matter mm. they found all types of different hundreds of different types of bacteria they even found diet coke boy our lawyers are really going to be busy on this one yeah this brought to you by Diet Pepsi. No, this is <laughs> brought to you by Fred Sherman and Associates. Never mind. So, uh, yes, uh, if uh, the lawyers haven't gotten to us, we, we will be back next week, week after week, every Thursday. We thank you for listening. Is We also invite you to go to our website. And if you go to our website, you're going to look at the top and it says birthdays. And you're wondering, what's that all about? If you have someone in your life that you'd like to send a very special birthday, birthday gift this is for you what is it it's the nick and roy's birthday salute to your loved one what you can we hear a sample right on the website go on there folks if you have somebody that you say well they have everything i don't know what to buy them this is the perfect gift every person that's got one for somebody they end up getting them for someone else because they just loved it so much. We have so many comments from the people. We've done we've done hundreds of them now. It is insane. It's fantastic. People cry all the time and they really and they say, How did you know that that was the particular, you know, whatever the fact is? Because yeah, we put together a little small little totally useless information program for your loved ones. So go to nickandroy.com slash birthdays. Nickandroy.com slash birthdays to get yours today. You're listening to totally useless information with Nick and Roy. <laughs> I hate baseball, but did you know? <laughs> we knew that. By the way, by the way, how'd you like that hockey game, Nick? No offense, dig it in. <laughs> yeah, at the time at the time that we recorded this, the Toronto Maple Leafs were eliminated by the Tampa Bay Lightning. I'm in Toronto, Canada. Roy's in Florida. You were saying, you know, they call stuff that you can use constantly on radio. They call it evergreen. Yes. And when you talk about the Toronto, <laughs> it's like evergreen. Yes. 
the absolutely. end result is they always lose. <laughs> you know what? You're absolutely right, my beloved Toronto Maple Leafs. So nonetheless, so what's your great first... team this year? Great team. Yeah, good yeah. job. Too. What a game! It what was a quite a game. All right, so... it was awesome. I don't even like hockey, and I was psyched watching that game. So it was awesome. Both sides, both sides played a great game. When the average major league pitcher throws a pitch, mm-hmm. it will rotate. 15 times before it reaches the home plate. That's on average. An average pitcher throwing an average pitch. (laughs) So that's like most of baseball. But anyway, yeah, yeah. If it goes past the catcher and he's asleep and it goes into the stands, it will have rotated 30 times. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's either a wild pitch because the the pitch get you know gets out of uh, gets out of control. I, the pitcher can't control the pitch, makes it a wild pitch. If the yeah. pitcher throws and the catcher can't catch it, it's called a passed ball. See? That's about the only thing that's wild about baseball. Exactly. I wish when the, the, the catcher doesn't catch it and hits somebody in the stands. That's wild for me in baseball. <laughs> it is. <laughs> now we're going to stay with baseball. The Boston Red Ooh. Sox have a player, Mookie Betts. Mm-hmm. Betts' parents chose his name in part to form the initials MLB. Ooh. His actual name is Marcus Lynn Betts. So Mookie is a nickname. So Marcus M. Lynn L. Betts, B. Yeah, see, I find this very bad, though. I'll be honest with you, because Pete Rose, the famous baseball player. Yes. Didn't he, like, lose a lot of things because he was betting on games? He got caught, yeah. So he was banned from the the Hall of Fame. I believe he was in the Baseball Hall of Fame and got thrown out because uh, he was was caught cheating. My question is, how come Mookie bets? (laughs) <laughs> no, <he doesn't laughs> that. That's but he, allowed? So here's the wild part The reason why they call him Mookie Because his parents Were watching basketball And they were watching Former NBA guard Mookie Blaylock Play basketball Shortly after Betts was born Sounds to me like they were drinking To pick the name Mookie <laughs> well, but his no, his actual no name offense, is, Mookie. His name is Marcus. Marcus is really his first name. Marcus Lynn Betts, MLB. Oh, okay, you so see? his name is Marcus. Right, not but Mookie. they were watching a basketball player to pick a name for their son who wound up being... You know, I take that back because I kind of like the name Marcus. I think Marcus is a good name. Yeah, it's really good. But Mookie, forget it. Hmm. Speaking of baseball, did you know that the first baseball uniforms were A, made of wool... Oh, wow. This is how stupid baseball is. <laughs> Who the hell wants to be running around on a hot field with a wool outfit on? <laughs> That's so ridiculous. Wool God. can be cool. No, don't you have like no, wool suits? No, no. no. Yeah, wool suits are the worst. I live in Florida. You're lucky we even wear underwear. <laughs> <laughs> and as you've heard from the news, sometimes we don't. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> wow. But anyway, the, the the uniforms were originally made out of wool. Mm-hmm. And even more crazy, the hats, the original baseball hats, were from woven straw. Oh, even better. (laughs) So they were wearing these straw hats, I guess, to block the sun. I don't know. (laughs) They block the sun away from their hot woolen outfits. No, it's to block the sheep from getting out to the field. <laughs> they're like, hey, you took my wool. <laughs> wow. Okay. So here's my teaser, and this is courtesy of a, of a colleague of mine, actually. This is courtesy of uh, Jerry Agar, who I work with uh, here in Toronto, uh, News Talk 1010, which is part of the iHeartRadio network, which is what we're on. We're on eight different stations, coast to coast to coast in Canada, on the iHeartRadio network. So Jerry said, hey, have you ever heard of Duke Kahanamoku? Now, he watched a documentary on him. I said, no, I haven't. And so he told me the I've story. I've smoked it. Have you? I've yes, you have it. Kahanamoku. <laughs> well, Kahanamoku. <laughs> I think you had a I'm lot. I'm on of... it right now, in fact. It's, I think... it's legal here, too, Nick. Yeah. <laughs> I think you had a lot of Kahanamoku. Uh, I don't know, it sounds like one of those drinks at Starbucks. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have a Kahanamoku. It actually does. A yeah. grande, though. So Go Duke ahead. Kahanamoku <laughs> was a Hawaiian surfer and swimmer who won three Olympic gold medals for the U.S., and Ooh. for several years was considered the greatest freestyle swimmer in the world. He was perhaps most widely known for developing the flutter kick, which largely replaced the scissor kick. So he created huh. the flutter kick. While living in Newport Beach, California in 1925, Kahanamoku rescued eight men from a fishing vessel that capsized. 
in heavy surf. While he was attempting to enter the city's harbor, using his surfboard, Gohanamoku made repeated trips from shore to the capsized ship. It was the most superhuman rescue act and the finest display of surfboard riding that has ever been seen in the world. He wound up saving eight of the fishermen by going back and forth on a surfboard in this heavy surf. How many fishermen were there, Nick? More than eight, because not everybody... Yeah, well, not everybody I, maybe there could have been like 80 and then it really wouldn't have been that great of a rescue. He, yeah, but he was... Maybe there was like nine, and he got eight. Duke Kahanamoku was a hero <laughs> because he saved eight lives, and he created a beautiful coffee drink at Starbucks. And he said, how'd he do it? He did the old flutter. <laughs> <laughs> the flutter kick. NFL football teams must provide 36 footballs for an outdoor game. And here's the real oddity. 24 footballs for an indoor game. Why? I don't know. <laughs> but that's bizarre. 36 footballs must be on hand for the team, that the, the home team. And uh, 24 if it's an indoor stadium. But that's not d the only fact here. Okay. I mean, that's a lot of balls. <laughs> it but it's not, <laughs> it's not the only fact. Here's the cool part. The balls were originally made, footballs were originally made out of cowhide, which is cowskin. Right. But cowskin can't hold air. So they had to have some sort of internal thing. Right now they're made of rubber, but back then they used pigs' bladders. Oh, okay. Which held air. So they were pigs' bladders blown up, covered in cowhide, was a football. Is that why they call it the pigskin? Like when you're playing. I would assume that is how it got the name, the pigskin. Possibly originally they were using pigskin. They figured they got the bladder. Why not use this to hide, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, the cat. That's what the pig did. He, he, he hide. He hide it. Yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> well, the cows were relieved. Right? The cows were like, yeah, the cows were like yeah. get him. Yeah. Get that pig. What a pig. What a pig. Use him. Yeah. I'm, I'm giving you milk. <laughs> <laughs> so when you win one of those championships, either be it baseball or the NFL or the Stanley Cup, it's some sort of trophy. It's a mm -hmm. sports trophy. Originally, the word trophy is derived from the Greek tropion, referred to arms, standards, and other property or human captives and body parts, like headhunting, that were captured in battle. These war trophies commemorated the military victories of the state, army, or individual combatant. Now they give everybody a trophy, That's participation true. trophy. They do. Every kid gets a trophy no yeah. matter what. Yeah, exactly. You know who started that? Who? The Trophy Association of America. <laughs> <laughs> Give them all trophies, yeah. including the parents. And, of course, he had a trophy wife. It's a trophy for having him. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Here's a cool fact. In 1935, in front of Adolf Hitler in Germany, yes. Jesse Owens breaks four world running records. That in itself is an amazing feat. But get ready, folks. He did it in 45 minutes. He ran race after race after race. 45 minutes. And broke. Minutes. For, within 45 minutes, he ran the first race. 15 minutes later, he ran another race. 15 minutes later, he ran another race. And 15 minutes after that, he ran the other race and won all four of them and broke world records in each one. Well, he had that to. is cool. It is. It's really cool. Speaking of cool, the Iditarod sled dog race. Ooh, up in Alaska. Nice segue, Nick. Yeah, thank you very much. Mush, yes. <laughs> <laughs> which is what my brain is right now. The Iditarod sled dog race carries on a racing tradition that started in those early days, way back when, 1925, in fact. It commemorates those intrepid mushers and their dogs who fought through blizzard conditions to bring a life-saving diphtheria serum to Nome, Alaska in 1925. Ooh. And they've been racing the dogs ever okay. since. And that's called the what, Nick? I did a rod sled dog race. Yeah, uh, a girl I went to high school with and took on a date said that to me once. <laughs> I did a rod. <laughs> we thank you. We thank you for joining us. 
go to our website, <laughs> nickandroy.com. You can listen to... A little to... sink in, folks. Give yeah. it a couple seconds. Give it a couple of seconds. <laughs> go to our website. We're going to do um, some, some <laughs> entries from our mailbag. But in the meantime, yes, you are listening to Totally Useless Information with Nick and Roy. You know, a friend of mine turned me on to a product called Athletic Greens. Folks, remember this, Athletic Greens. This product is amazing. I was having trouble sleeping at night. I was taking all kinds of stuff, melatonin, this, that, sleeping stuff, no good. I take Athletic Greens, I sleep better, I wake up feeling fantastic, my stomach feels better, I have more energy. I know you hear this stuff, but it really, Athletic Greens, an amazing product. Look them up. They're Athletic Greens on Instagram. Don't take our word for it. Check out all of the testimonies from the people who are using Athletic Greens every day, and they feel amazing with 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals. You want to start your day off right. Yeah, and it's less than the cost of a cup of coffee per day. That's right. So another thing, they gave us a special deal. They said to us, why don't you tell your loyal listeners we'd love to do this for them because they're loyal listeners to Total Uses Information with Nick and Roy. Go to athleticgreens.com slash emerging, and they will send you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to the website, athleticgreens.com slash emerging. That's athleticgreens.com slash emerging. Do it. Do it today. I'm telling you, you're going to feel great. Athleticgreens.com slash emerging. What's in the mailbag? What's in the mail? I have an entry here from one of my fellow Canadians, one of the Canucks from Calgary, Alberta. Mm. Frank from Calgary writes, Dear Nick and Roy, thank you both for providing us some actual comic relief. Okay, sure. Yeah. Actual. Sure. The world around me has become chaotic. When mm. I found out about your show, my cousin told me about you. <laughs> That's not the first time. Uh, I couldn't help but share your shows with all of my friends. Why, thank you. That's why we say at the end of every show, tell a friend about a trend, right? So thank you. And everybody's been listening. No wonder the world's chaotic. That's right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Great point. That's why the world is chaotic, because they're listening to totally useless information with Nick and Roy. What, I found, what Frank says is what I found most intriguing is how you guys come up with not only the facts, but you guys are funny together. I want to thank you two lunatics and for keeping me sane. <laughs> no, so he go. wants to thank the you two You know, that's the problem. Most people don't realize they're nuts. <laughs> right. I want to thank you two lunatics and for keeping me sane. So thanks, yes, Frank, from Calgary. Transference. Yes. <laughs> from Calgary, Alberta. Go to nickandroy.com and click on contact us, and that's how you can get in touch with us. So I was going through the many emails, and we do appreciate every email, folks. We can't get to everybody, but right. thank you so much for sending them. But this one I saw, I thought was pretty funny because it was titled, I Love You. Oh. <laughs> so, of course, I thought it was from Angelina Jolie, but it wasn't. <laughs> of course you did. <laughs> but it was from Holly from Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia, Holly. She writes, I love you guys. I tell everyone and then she wrote dot, 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 to listen to the show. Not that I love you guys. Because <laughs> <laughs> okay. that was very good that she clarified that because that would have been a little weird, right? Yeah. But she tells everyone to listen to the show. And she said, it's my birthday today. Oh. And actually, it was about a week ago that she sent the email. So. Okay. But she okay. said, can you say it on the show? No, we won't. So. No. no. I'm going to tell you this, Holly. You need friends to listen to the show and go to nickandroy.com so they could send you a birthday card from us. Even though it's belated, tell them to go on nickandroy.com and look up the birthday card thing, the birthday message. It's it's really awesome. It's not it. belated. We're early for next year. That's true. That's true. But anyway, Holly, happy birthday, my dear. Thank you. We love you, too. We love you, too, Holly. Is your sister's name Ivy? <laughs> so once again you go to our website to send us an email nickandroy.com and now for something completely 
completely useless. Uh, Pope Francis, you know, he's uh, he's the Pope, right? He's you know, yeah. the big guy. He's a you big know. guy, yeah. big dude, yeah. He was one a heavy job there. <laughs> well, he had a bigger job, even heavier job. He was a bouncer yeah. in Argentina. What? Pope Francis no. was once a bouncer in Argentina. He was born in Bo- Buenos Aires, Argentina, which, by the way, we have some of our listeners are from Argentina. So, hola. To but all you the- know what, though? I could picture this because he had a little gimmick. He'd go over to the drunk people and he'd yeah. say, you got to go. I swear to God, <laughs> if you don't go. <laughs> he worked as a bouncer and a janitor as a young man before training to be a chemist. And work as a technician in a food science laboratory. Well, At- wait a minute. So he was a chemist, a bouncer, and now the Pope. Right. He- wow. Interesting so- life. So if he was in that song, <laughs> That's Life, he was a bouncer, a janitor, a pope, <laughs> yeah. a pope and a king. Pope. <laughs> king of the Vatican. That's right. He go. was. He is a king. Yeah. Uh, so wow. after he recovered from a severe illness, which uh, had inspired him to join the Society of Jesus, the Jesuits, in 1958. He was oh. ordained as a priest in 1969, and he became the Archbishop of Buenos Aires in 1998 and was created as a cardinal in 2001 by Pope John Paul II, who eventually died, and Pope Francis was elected Pope March 13th, 2013. Wow. Interesting life. That's a pretty cool one. He was a bouncer, a janitor, a chemist, yeah. and a Could pope and a him king. As a bouncer? Yeah. I swear to God, I'm going to punch you right in the face. <laughs> You're all going to hell. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a very sad fact here, Nick. Uh-oh. It's very sad. Okay. Sad but true. Male bees have sex once. What? You heard me. Are they married? Have sex once. Are they married? Yeah, that, exactly. That's not funny. like marriage. <laughs> Have sex once, and you're like, I what? <laughs> death do us part? Yes. Well, for the bee, it is death do us part. They have sex once, and they die. Oh. You know why they die, Nick? No, I don't. Why? Their testicles explode. Oh, really? <laughs> now, now, let me just say this That to would you. do it, yeah. This probably would happen... If Angelina Jolie came in the room, but no, all joking aside, the poor bee oh. has sex with the queen bee. Yeah. And his testicles explode and he immediately dies. Mm. So he doesn't even get to enjoy it. Like he doesn't even get to have one of them little bee cigarettes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Lay back and say to the queen, how was I? <laughs> no. <laughs> Boom. His <laughs> testicles explode. <laughs> well, here's the thing, though. You know, when when uh, what? When you want to teach your your kids, you know, about sex, that you teach them about the birds and the bees, right? Yeah. But what are you teaching them if the bees die after they have sex once? Maybe that's oh, that's no, I got it now. Because you want to tell your kids, you just want to have sex once, and that's it. I get. That's it right. Now. Tell them about the birds and the bees. See, right. the bees die. Right. So you don't want right. to. Do if my this. testicles blew off my body. I'd want to die too. <laughs> Probably in a higher octave. Hey, today in the show, <laughs> today in the show, we talked about games. We talked about some science. We went, uh, well, we went deep into sports with baseball. It's time for the news. And now, from around the corner and around the world, this is TUI News. I married my man via Zoom. Well, I'm not saying this. This is the headline. Okay, this is not me saying this. Um, No judgment here, Nick. No. (laughs) (laughs) 2022, no judgment. (laughs) I married my man via Zoom, even though we'd never met. Three months later, my whole world came crashing down. That's the quote from Ace. A computer crashed? No, Ace Reed. Oh. <laughs> no, she, no, this is worse. She worse. wishes her computer crashed. Ace Reeves watched her American boyfriend propose over Zoom. She screamed with delight and thought all of her dreams had come true. Despite never meeting Darren Martin, she'd fallen head over heels in love after striking up an online friendship with the 24-year-old during lockdown. Ooh, they had computer sex, you think? Uh, I think so. Maybe they uh, both the the computer mice had sex. Uh, Ace no, was wow, that's crazy. Go it, ahead. It, so it, she eats this guy. She was thrilled thrill. when her man proposed via Zoom, and the couple used a video calling app to get married. Ace became Britain's first Zoom bride. So she's from Britain. 
Right. She quickly said yes, and even though the global restrictions prevented them from walking down the aisle, they were legally married over the Internet, making the 26-year-old from Lancaster, Britain's first Zoom bride. Hmm. Her story went viral and made headlines around the world. But, sure. alas, there's a heartbreaking twist. For just no. weeks after saying I do, the factory worker Darren from Michigan... Well, there's trouble right there. Right there. Uh, she discovered that he was playing with his ex. No, no. Where was she? On the other Zoom thing? Uh, <laughs> no, she was on WhatsApp. Was she on his smartphone? She was waiting on his smartphone? No, she was on WhatsApp. She's now, WhatsApp. Tra- <laughs> She's <on> WhatsApp. <laughs> She's now trying to terminate their marriage. It wasn't a fairy tale ending I had hoped for. Oh, wait, wait a minute. So he got married. Okay. Right. So. Ace. Eight to Ace. Right. And right. he became a bigamist. He went back to his ex. Isn't was what, his ex in Michigan? He's a what? What did you call him? A bigamist. Bigamist? That's what they call fog in Italy. Bigamist. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, that's a bigamist. That's right. So I first became suspicious uh, because Darren might be seeing someone else. I felt like something was off. Whenever I asked him, he denied anything. When he, what, what did she think was off? When she zoomed him and there was a naked <laughs> woman in the background getting out of the shower? There was, <laughs> there was something about him. She couldn't quite put her finger on it because she wasn't in the same room. She aced it. <laughs> I then became <laughs> she did. I then became aware of an ex girlfriend he called Liz. And after I got in touch with her, she messaged me on Facebook saying, Yes, I am sleeping with your husband and we're together. Oh. Oh, so no. you talk about a cat fight. Wow. So what did she do? She zoomed her and had a fight with her? A fictitious <laughs> fight? She had a virtual fight. No. Yeah. I have asked them since if they are together or not, but I was told one thing and find out the opposite. On the social media account. So they lied to her, straight to her face. So he was in Michigan. Right. And she's in the UK. She's in the UK. Right. And she got married to this guy she never met. Right. And in the meantime, Liz is playing pig in the Pope (laughs) with this guy. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. She's control all deleting, if you know what I mean. The three fingers. They got so divorced, Nick. Well, it's taking some time because he's in the states and she's in the UK. The sure. it's taking weeks for the final paperwork to arrive to dissolve their marriage. That's. I mean, by then Liz will have had a child, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> a little baby apple computer, <laughs> <laughs> the small apple. He's the apple of their eyes. So <laughs> while things were going well, they would fall asleep while video calling each other so they can feel closer. She made a stuffed toy with Darren's likeness and the, so that they could be together. So she made the stuffed toy with his picture on it, and she fell yes. asleep on the bed with this, its pillow. What do you think she did with this stuffed toy of Darren? Now they're planning a divorce party. <laughs> what do you think she did? <laughs> I'm going to tell you, Nick, I'll be honest with you. I've seen some guys, they spend a lot of money on these dolls. <laughs> yes. They're lifelike dolls. We'll discuss this one other show on another show, but they're lifelike dolls that actually have voice things on, in them. Yes. And they pre-program them yes. to say yeah. things like how wonderful they are. And yeah. Well, like this that. is what she did. She had a... Darren's talk. not that way because Darren's... Uh, well, he's stupid, all, stupid Liz in he, Michigan. He's stupid Liz in <laughs> Michigan, but he, see, uh, Darren is a uh, is a poet. Oh, because she says I've got a tattoo on my forearm of his <gasps> poetry, and I'm planning oh, to. Get are you it. kidding me? And, this no. girl never met this guy. She marries him. She tattoos herself. She makes a blow up doll of Darren to have sex with. Right, allegedly, and allegedly. she has a tattoo of his poetry on her forearm, which now she has to cover up. Wow. Yeah. So she says. This so he is- said it said rose. It says roses are red, violets are blue. I'm pork and Liz, and goodbye to you. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, if that's not poetic, I don't know what is. The ex- He's not the only one that's a poet. <laughs> no. <laughs> He's not the only one sleeping with Liz. <laughs> She gets around. The experience has put Ace off of dating, and she's happy to remain single for now. Oh, she's going to be celibate from this point forward. Yeah, you kidding? She's going to be off the internet. So if you like her email address, contact us. We'll get you in touch with her. 
Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, don't contact us. Contact Ace in England. <laughs> Ace in England. Yeah. Need some help. Yeah. Darren's kind of busy with Liz. Hey. Yeah. Th- that's all. Darren's got his hands full, so to speak. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Better yet, Liz has got her hands full. I think. <laughs> Hey, we're going to get busy, if you know what I mean. We're That's all the time we have for this episode of Totally Useless Information with Nick and Roy. We will scour the internet and other sources to find useless information for you next time. And until then, we have a job for you. And that job is to tell all of your friends to listen to this show. It's not only informative, but sometimes at least once or maybe like less than a minute out of an hour, it's funny. (laughs) I'm Nick. And I'm Roy. Thanks for listening. Totally Useless Information with Nick and Roy is a production of NickAndRoy.com. Visit NickAndRoy.com to access the full library of episodes or wherever you get your podcasts.